That is our first. Got it. That is our first item of business. Our second item of business is uh, public comments. Huh. Um, any mm. members of the public there or um, information that uh, members of the public wanted to get to the board through staff? No. Nope. Okay, that moves us along. Do you, uh, you look at the daily paper at all, Mike? The Times Argus? Yeah. From time to time. Did you see the story on Plainfield? Uh, no, what's that? Well, it's a, a brouhaha about uh, the uh, the people and whether and what role they're they're filling and how they got it. And uh, apparently there's a accusation that two men got together and decided who was going to get something and who wasn't going to get it. Uh, the IT and, contract and, and Sasha Thayer has always been in the middle of it. Which she's long on brains, but not very good on diplomacy. But anyway, it's just it was like a whole five or six paragraphs on the front, and then going inside longer about the meeting. So, what your issue of public comment was that whatever they were following as public comment turned into the whole meeting. Sounded to me. Oh, I see. Yeah, we've. So, um... We've had some public comment from time to time, and um, we continue to welcome uh, people to visit during that early slot. We got we don't even have to stay for the whole meeting. There, there's my pitch. All right, um, next item uh, is approval of the 21st of February minutes. And I imagine you guys have paper in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I've got an electronic version here, draft minutes. Um, this would be uh, much thanks to Rachel. Um, yep. She carried the duties very well. And uh, our thoughts are with her. And uh, we'll just take a minute and review them. I'm sure they're great, but we might find a typo or uh, something that needs clarifying. And um, uh, yeah, I'll accept any uh, revisions, amendments, or uh, motion to accept. Looks good to me. Yeah, that's that does look quite clean. Um, <clears throat> any uh, any revisions or a motion to accept? I motion to accept it. I uh, second. Carlos so moves uh, to accept the. Um, February minutes of 2023. I didn't hear who the second was, sorry. Dave. Dave. Thank you, Dave, on the seconding. Um, I'll call the question. All those in favor of accepting the draft minutes as a final uh, from February 21st, 2023, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And that's unanimous accepting of the minutes. Thank you for that, folks. Um, that brings us to the financial reports. And um, I don't know if we ought to wait on CJ and hopscotch over a director's report, but there has been some movement. Um, CJ called me about a week ago with a couple of um, moves that she and Mike Doyle were planning. 
um, one of which was an easy to understand. Jen, you may have to give me some backup on this. Um, can moving we, kind of that. Go ahead. Can we go to the co-director's report and then come back to that when CJ's here? Um, yeah, I'll um, try. Right, that's probably more efficient than me lamely trying to summarize a phone call. Um, shall we um, move on to the co-director's report? I think yes. yes. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All right. So maybe um, we'll do something similar uh, to what we did last time, where we, you know, we have everything in front of you all, and then we'll give some of our some of our highlights from what's been going on. So, um, big production, I think, was really around town meeting day. Lots happening. Lots, uh, a few live stream events, but mostly uh, just coverage around the area. Um, exciting stuff and um, back in full, full uh, populated rooms, right? So that was cool. Um, yeah, and then so as far as outreach, community partnerships, we um, announced summer plans. So that's big news. Again, uh, we're doing the uh, Vermont Eats Documentary Lab um, <coughs> in July, and then the week after we'll be doing the uh, Make TV Camp for the younger folks. So the Vermont Eats Documentary Lab is 15 to 19 year olds for a week, and then uh, the Orca Media Make TV Camp will be 11 to 14 year olds for the following week. And we said to help spread the word, but um, I have some posters and I can send some links if you if you do want to help spread the word. Um, so uh, as you all know, as far as strategic planning goes, we postponed the strategic planning retreat, the board retreat with Nathan Suter, our consultants, uh, due to last minute absences. So the final date, um, and then we'll just kind of triple confirm with everybody is going to be May 23rd from four to seven. So we sent out like two potential dates over yeah. email, and I think we discussed it at the last minute too. But um, we're gonna just jump into the 23rd. We're gonna really commit to that one. So uh, that's the plan. And I'll send out more calls, and then uh, hopefully that relates to board recruitment, and then maybe by yeah. the 23rd, we'll have some new folks join, joining us. That would be really great. So I just wanted to comment, you know, if we're going to do this meeting the 23rd, I mean, we should assume, and we're, we're saying yes today, unless something really happens, we should just assume say yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a yes, right? Right, right. I think it is, because we had yeah. two yeses for two dates in May, and then we when we said everybody was available, available for both of them, and we're choosing the yeah. later one just to give us our, uh, ourselves more time, um, yeah. hopefully for recruitment's sake. So all I can do is cross out the question mark that I put down after four to seven. Yeah, exactly. Make it an exclamation mark. Yeah, um, we've gone from question marks to yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what I like to do. Okay, Keeping forward. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. So staff and interns. Uh, you can see here that we have a new uh intern named Pan, and they started two weeks ago. Three. Three weeks ago, and uh. Pans uh, through the Vermont Youth Employment Program. Um, and then, yeah, so they just got started and they're doing all kinds of fun interny things. We'll have more on that. Um, we also have one new camera operator and one returning camera operator for the summer, right? Mm -hmm. Is that Wayne? Yeah. Oh, so well, Finn. Seasonal. Oh, sorry, so Finn. Finn yeah. graduated yeah. his college, so he's back, and now I think not planning on leaving again. So oh. that'll be nice. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, Finn is great. Um, so Finn. Finn, yeah, Finn again. So what's P H A Y V A N H? Uh, Pivon. Okay, I thought you were you. I could have made that. 
I'm a fan of five breathing air comet. Oh, right. Yeah. So Paivon is uh, our director with the uh, Greenmont Film Festival. So there's a little note up there in the outreach section about Greenmont Film Festival, mostly that donation donations have been rolling in and Paivon is working on all that. Great. Um, cool. So back over to finances on the report. Do you want to so the finance portion of the co-directors is usually just kind of like a couple of things from the budget versus actuals. We were a little bit under on salaries just because we were a little bit short staffed um, in the previous months. But now with the new one starting and Finn coming back, so we should be rolling back um, and we're still in the state house. So we still are expecting the salaries to be a little bit higher just because we have more um, events being covered. Mm -hmm. So Outside of that, I think um, the other bit that was that we were over was outreach, and that was that we decided to um, fund the hometown awards for all of the community producers who wanted to put their video one one show into the hometown awards. Yeah. So um, paying for those fees just kicked us out, kicked our outreach over a little bit than we expected for the um, year to date. So now, outside who, of who runs that hometown video award? Is that um a regional? Sure, so that's, yeah, that's the national uh, the it's Alliance the, for Community Media, the national organization, and it's all uh around the annual conference that's coming up in June in New York. So that's exciting. It'll be at Brick in Brooklyn, and the hometown media awards is like the final event, and then they'll you know give out the awards at the end. So mm. maybe one of our Community producers will have a plaque coming home with them or coming home with me, I guess, back to them. Hey. So that's in New York City when? June. It's the last weekend uh, or the last week of June, three days. Um, I can tell you specifically the 26th through the 28th, I believe. And so is Orca sending any representatives? Yeah, Orca is sending me, so I'll be there with uh, Orca bells and whistles, or I guess Orca t-shirt or something, and uh, I'll be, yeah, I'll be representing, and then hopefully, like I said, I think we submitted eight total videos, so hopefully coming back with a, an award for somebody, and yeah. What is the official title of the Brooklyn event? Uh, it's the national conference. It's it's the ACM conference, which is the Alliance for Community Media. So it's it's the big one. Last year, I think, it was in Chicago, kind of usually in a major city. Does it get covered by media? Probably, yeah. I mean, it, I, I imagine so we could yeah. actually follow it if we wanted to. So the producers yeah. have to the things they produce <clears throat> were in studio here. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, in like association with us or through our yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. So maybe uh, bouncing back to finance. Okay. So um, in the finance, we talk about the 125, which is part of what Michael was starting to talk about um, in terms of there was a surplus in our savings account from the COVID years and saving mm -hmm. and and all our saving that we did against the expenses that had been just kind of sitting in our savings account. And I think in the last meeting, we started to have this conversation of, you know, we what should we do with that? And we started to talk about, you know, if there was this windfall of 125,000, are there things that we wanted to do that would be like a one-time expense? And I think the co-directors talked about, you know, it's a, do we finally want to do something more with the studio and make it a little bit more like remote controlled with the lights? And so it was the, that conversation started to happen, whether it was, I think, um, Mike and CJ or Mike Doyle and CJ also talked about, you know, is there an internship or scholarship maybe that this would fund? So there was the conversation started to happen about what to do with this money that's a one time extravagant or like one time windfall that mm -hmm. wouldn't be something so we maybe wouldn't want to put it towards salary because it wouldn't be ongoing but we might be able to fund like a position or an intern for a year that might use up that money and so I think that was 
some of the conversations of how to spend it, I think the conversation that Mike and CJ might have had is where do we put it so that it's making money and easily accessible and how that structure might look like. And that was more of a, um, and I think CJ might have more, more information about the funds that they're looking at doing, whether it's like a money market or some, C I think CD, laddered CDs were thrown around. So that part was, and I think um, we're aiming for the 125 to have a cushion of 20% of the expenses. But I think CJ had floated that it'd be better to be 10 to 15. So with that, then we're looking at maybe 132 rather than 125 that we would be moving out to maintain a cushion of like 10% to the 10% of the expenses, the monthly expenses that we would keep in like the checking account. Mm -hmm. So, as I, if I recall right, um, CJ was, it sounded like uh, she and is it Mark at Edward Jones? Yeah. And Mike had met, and I think they landed on basically breaking 125 into five pieces of $25,000 each and doing um, quarterly CDs. Uh, laddered so that they become quarterly due. And then the other 20, the last 25 goes right into a money market. I That's my recollection. But she said she'd floated that by staff and that sounded fluid enough for you all. There's yeah. no really overhanging must get. Um, and no, then we I feel think... good. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I think that that sounded fine. It comes down to whether it won't will or won't work. Maybe will also be how the money is going to be spent. So I would imagine, like if we're looking at funding an intern, then that would be ongoing. So having those those CDs mature and like turn around, that would be still follow through. If we're looking for like a massive change in the studio and it's like a hundred thousand dollars in lights or something, which I don't think it would be, then that may not be the right way. So it comes down to um, what gets decided in terms of how to spend it. And um, mm. so that would be the only bit that I could see maybe it changes that. The, the money doesn't have to be spent this year. Is that correct? You just have to park it somewhere so it doesn't. Yeah, I think that taxes and everything, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I think the goal was also trying to get some more money out of it because I think our yeah, savings yeah. account that we've got it in has got like 0 0.02 or percent. And so yeah. moving it into something that yields a little bit more would be ideal since it's just kind of sitting there right now. So this conversation is like a longer term conversation, yeah. right? Like it's a, not this, yeah. 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 If if we spend money on lights in the studio, do we have to get that cleared? With the people that are trying to save the college. Well, that's another yeah, yeah that's a good question. Cool. But that's another conversation I think too is like, you know, and I mean maybe we could touch base at like the new business section. But I think that one idea too is maybe contemplating a move and you know having money Correct. available for that. So um, okay, so maybe the lights wouldn't be. I was just yeah. thinking that not to install them. Right, right. Well, yeah, I'm sure we have not be portable yeah. if we go elsewhere. Well, right, right. right. <clears throat> well, with the lights, the lights that they could buy, whatever lights they could buy, they can move them anywhere. Yeah. Okay. I think I, not, didn't, I, I think definitely that. you should not do anything. I personally think with the infrastructure, nothing, nothing should be done with you. Yes. Okay, yeah. good. I just that I, that's why they were part of possibly going. To be I think the money should be go go towards the contemplation of a movie. I I don't exactly, know. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Safer okay. to have it. That's what I want to get personally. Yeah. You know. CJ's here. Mike Freeze. Well, no, he's doing very still. So see. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'll add to that. Like you know, it, we could even discuss it. We, we we have been discussing like if we would purchase real estate, you know, purchase a building. Correct. So I think that's one conversation that I'm hoping to have with other EDs around the state about like. Different community media centers that yeah. own their building, or and there's yeah, I, get their yeah. how did they do it? Yeah, you know, yeah exactly. it, absolutely. So I heard from a few already that great. Yeah. <clears throat> so, do you want to say anything else on finances? No, I think that's all. Unless there's some questions that um, 
about any of the budget statements. If there were any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. This is, well, it's related to budget. It's not budget per se, but uh, how is the equipment right now? So what you have right now, is it in working condition, and cameras, your computers, all that? Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> Just so okay. Yeah. Holding yeah. strong, yeah. 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 But no major purchases, right? No, you're, you're no, seeing, other than the stats. Yeah. Server, whatever you know. Yeah, that's yeah. probably not this year, maybe coming down the line. Yeah. It may be a conversation. That was another one that we talked about in terms of um, that extra money is, you know, do we save some of it also for the server? Because Harriet, the hypercaster, is definitely coming to the end of her lifespan. I mean, she's not showing any that troubles or anything, yeah. but yeah. that's something also that, you know, they're. And it could be also, I think there's talk about if there's an, if Comcast gives us HD on the channels, whether Harriet, the hypercaster will be able to handle that, or if there, if that might bring the move on to the next level, just because the newer models can do the HD. And so, but that also we may, I would imagine that we would try to tie that in. If we do get the HD channels that we would tie in the purchase of the new equipment to be able to do the HD. Um, and since Harriet's pretty old, that it would make sense to do it then as well. But that's also down the line of um, when that actually might happen. I don't think that it's it's definitely being talked about. Yeah. And um, but whether it's in the next year or the next few years, it's hard to know. But she's she's strong and she doesn't want to leave us. So uh -huh. yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so just to wrap up the director's report here is that uh, so statewide, regional big news um, over there. Um, looks like there's a comment maybe in there too. You want to check. Um, so, statewide regional news is that the $1 million uh, dollar bridge funding um, uh, is in the budget. Uh, uh, statewide, so it's made it through the House, and now it's in the, the Senate budget. So, um, actually, I, I just listened to the conversation that they were having in that the committee. So it was a lot of support, which was good, and that was that was the exciting thing is that they were all mm -hmm. sitting there saying how great you know public access and community media has been over the last couple of years, and that they they're hoping to definitely support us um, with the bridge funding and looking forward to the next thing, which is the uh, introduction of the public uh, benefit fund, um, H458, um, which we can, um, you can see in your board packet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, the, yep. th that's the summary of it right there which you can read on your own um which we you know we've talked about the polls right the poll tax um in our meetings here and you can get a little bit more detail there um so yeah it's it's kind of unclear like what kind of support there is at this point i think but um that's exciting it's it's in um yeah so then finally with the in the upcoming section there the last part of the report is that um, obviously, we have three board members that have um, uh, left our ranks, so we are actively um, doing recruitment, um, and we have a, a Google Drive, Google folder now that you can see some CVs that will stick in there okay. um, for some potential folks. We had a lot of excitement um, from uh, Mel Hauser, oh, who's the executive director of All Brains Belong a new nonprofit here in um, Montpelier, although she um, said, unfortunately, she had a very important Tuesday night meeting that she that can't commit to anything that's uh, conflicts with that. So the other one that you will see in there is um, if you look at Aylan Cohn is a Montpelier city council person. She's submitted her CV and interest in serving with us. I also have a number of feelers out with some other folks. Um, yeah, so as we, I guess we'll just kind of like give you a rolling update on that. And then um, I believe the next 
step will be like an interview um, with Michael. We can all look at the CVs. I guess if we have a number of people that are showing interest, maybe you know we'll have more to go through and look at as a group. But um, hopefully, we could really bring in some people um, within the next couple weeks. Um, yeah. So that does it for the report. And then you know maybe we can talk about that in as a group in, in the new business. Chris, generally board candidates have visited a board meeting. Right, right. But we're looking, we're, are, are you um, suggesting that a new board member may join our May strategic planning meeting and would not be on board, would not, we would not have a board meeting prior to then? Is that what, um, yeah, I think is that what um, you're suggesting? We, we kind of do an expedited between meetings. I think I think that would be great to get the so that we have that new energy and you know they could just jump into I mean everybody that I've let know about the board and the the kind of where Orca Media is at um I've talked about the strategic planning project that we're you know really I'd say I don't know if we're halfway through but we're in you know we're 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 in it and uh now it's the next step is a board retreat and board involvement so I think that I'm hoping somebody would be excited about that and then they'd enter with that enthusiasm. Now, I was a, just the community engagement manager when Chad and Rachel joined. And um, so I wasn't totally part of the process. And I, I, rem I remember it was an, an interview and that, so I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm a little rusty on the process, but you're saying, so maybe we could have an expedited uh, recruitment or expedited joining instead of the uh, guest starring at the, the board meeting in June. Mm -hmm. like sure. And just yeah. just to um, put a finer point on it, um, our bylaws do not call for a minimum number. So thanks for checking that. So we're okay at six right now. Um, and we top out at nine. So we really, we don't have to panic, get three on the board quick. Right. Um, one at a, at a, you know, a nice pace would be good. And uh, we've sat with seven, you know, for a, a good percentage of our life as a board. So um, nine, we grew into nine. Um, so I don't feel like, uh oh, we got to get right back up to nine. Um, but sitting on a small, even number like six is a little tricky. But look, we got five out of six tonight for a quorum. And CJ has a hand up. Thanks, Mike. Um, I've put my questions and comments in the chat window. And uh, then I wanted to ask um, whether when would be appropriate to discuss some of the bylaws changes that I sent to you? Or at least, did you get them? I, I know you've had a busy week. Me being me, you being you. I, through email, I did not receive any any bylaws changes proposed. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, if there's an appropriate time in the meeting, uh, it looks like the only people who got it were actually the co-directors. Then I sent some um, bylaws change suggestions that I think will uh, protect the company. And uh, and also potentially um, just you know st spur some discussion. Sure. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if you used an old email or what, but um, the topic right now is uh, the, the board member recruitment, and I see you have something about geographic uh, diversity. So um, sure. Yeah, I, yep. I had just mentioned the part where just Chris is like you know asking board members to throw him names of people they think may be um, interested and appropriate. Yeah, and I guess I'll add too that we did, we have some criteria that, you know, in the past we haven't had like official criteria. We've just had a short synopsis that Rob would send out what, what it actually was to serve on the board. So I think that, you know, kind of uh, in parallel with the strategic planning project, uh, I think that there's some criteria and that we'd like to see yeah no, i was gonna i was just gonna comment before this about what cj was saying right now and talking about right now and 
I think we can we accommodate this within our within the new business. Yeah. Is that correct? In terms of bylaw change proposals, that sounds like a good place to park that. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. So um so those two things, and then I have a when we get there, I have a comment about new business, how we address new business and old business. Because I have some questions about that, but we'll do that later then. Just procedurally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. And then and then in terms of procedure, CJ, we um we skipped over the financial reports because you weren't here yet. And uh we're we're close to wrapping up the executive director's report, I believe. Yeah, that's a wrap right there. So we can jump back to number four. Well, we could um any questions from the board on the executive director's report, or uh does someone want to move to accept? Um well, my last question, well, you know, obviously the upcoming, um, I'm sorry, I'm scouting for new members. Right, right. I just go to link and if we, if we know people, which I know somebody that might be interested, have them dump their, they'll give me their, their yeah. CV and I'll dump it in that folder. Is that correct? Yeah. And, or you can do that or introduce them to, to me okay. and I can uh, talk okay. to them about it and then I can take their CV or um, you could just send me their contact information. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So either way. Okay. And on board recruiting, um, I John Block and and Rob Chapman brought me in, and um, the reason I mentioned it is they were always very concerned because we represent so many different you know communities in trying to get diversity in terms of location. Have we changed that? I think that's still a priority. Yeah, I think um, you know trying to make sure we have folks that live within our whole region would be great. So we're kind of Montpelier heavy and Randolph heavy right now, right? We yeah. lost a very strong Waterbury board member for sure. So I am, um, and then I have some people that I think would be great, but they're Randolph. And so what I could do, and part of the reason they'd be great is because they add additional diversity. Um, but I, I think we should, so what we could do is I could ask uh, if they know of anybody sort of like them in other communities because they're they're minority groups that are you know that tend to like know where other minority groups are. Mm -hmm. uh, what skills and what diversity do we need? So I'll just add that the co-directors did uh, put some stuff down. You know that is like I said that kind of pulling from the strategic plan um, that the language of the strategic plan, obviously nothing is finalized, right? Because we're still in the the making of it. Um, and so, you know, especially with Rachel Muse leaving it, we, the number one thing we wrote down was experience with policy, you know, uh, and HR, um, experience in fundraising and outreach, um, especially within marginalized communities. Um, so then we also said diversity and lived experience. So maybe not someone that has uh nonprofit you know professional nonprofit experience but somebody that you know would be from uh BIPOC LGBTQ IA uh, group that you know has diversity and lived experience and then also professional experience with uh DEI work um yeah so that's what we got four big categories um and I would add regional uh location you know just also prioritizing bringing in folks from around the region yeah, so. What about, um, okay, so we're gonna add to that list geographic diversity. Um, I happen to have good connections in the trans and BIPOC, but uh, what about uh, political points of view? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that that's something that we like discuss when we're recruiting people, but I don't have experience with that, uh, bringing people in as far as discussing their politics, so. Michael, maybe you want to speak to that. Um, we're an apolitical organization, and uh, I, I, I don't think we are. are I don't know. Are, are, I, CJ, I don't know if you, you, you seem to think we are some radical left wing uh, sect of. Uh, I'm not sure what what your concern is, but we're an apolitical organization, and we just do the work of our mission, and it. Um, I don't think we're trying to promote or silence uh, any particular uh, ideology. 
Um, and I don't think we ought to be asking people, you know, who they voted for in the last election as part of a board process. Um, I certainly agree with that. Um, so, but I also just um, wanted to bring it up because it's one of the most divisive things about our culture today. And since we're trying to draw points of view from the community and encourage everybody to, uh, to uh, contribute and create content, yeah, I think, I think public I really, I really, maybe I'm delusional, but I really think Orca is, is and and public media generally, especially public access media, is kind of above that fray of divisiveness. I think if you watch a lot of cable news, you really see a polarized America. But you know, when I go to work and I talk to people, I just feel like, hey, American, oh, you know, and I think Orca really reflects that. But um, I think the more you watch, the more you realize, wow, we cover a lot of points of view. Absolutely, um, yeah. If you're not watching and you just, you know, get a sense that, oh, they, they're living off the Comcast parasitics. I don't know what the theory would be that that Orca is somehow um, somewhere on the political spectrum as an organization. I'm not sure. Um, you know what, Mike? I think what you just said is so important that I want to actually write it down in a little blurb that says, this is what Orca is. And if you look at our content, it is remarkable how many different points of view, uh, conservative, liberal, pro anti, whatever. Yeah. And a lot of it is just like, it's, you know, like it's a select board meeting where there's a range within, you know, it's, it's, um, I think we're more in the business of capturing what's going on than trying to slant things. And it, there's a ton of noise out there, you know, and I, I just, I think we do a good job of not, not a, we're more the signal than the noise, so to speak. Well, there's a lot of people. Very, I think we're a very watching. grounding, we're very lucky in Vermont. There's a lot of media deserts out there in the country where all they have is Fox or MSNBC and they've, I think it, it enforces just said, a Mike, that polarized there's available mindset. Fox pit commentators that are, are looking for work now. <laughs> it might, we might want to have them be honorary uh, consultants. Yeah. Well, we don't, them, we what's don't, wrong with Fox? Our, our producers are independent. We don't we don't pay them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was nice of us though to 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 put the bill for the uh, hometown media entries. That's that's kind of a, a payment in kind, just an appreciation. So I hope you guys do well in New York. Um, Be exciting. Yeah, and I think uh, just to kind of touch on or to say something about the board recruitment again is that, um, you know, I think my goal would be, since this is something I'm working on every day uh, right now, is to just have a bunch of people that we can really like, you know, we have a, a great choice that it's like, hey, look at all these people that are really excited about doing it. And we need, only need three out of 10 people that have showed interest. So, you know. I would encourage those people from Randolph to to apply if you think they're, they're great candidates. Yeah, that's what I think. I agree. And feel free to CJ to just you know in, introduce them to me over yeah. email or send me their contacts, and I can reach out and say something similar to who I've been kind of. And and also I think that maybe we could just say this now too is that I would like to maybe write up uh, something that we could publicly post too um, if if within the next week we don't have ten you know, excited individuals, right? So something that we could post on social media, front porch forum, something like that. I think that'd be great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then you all can share around. Um, I know WGDR is also looking for board members and they reached out to me and I said, hey, we need some too. So, you know, like they're- And the yeah. bridge. And the bridge, yes. So it's like, it seems to be a the theme in central Vermont yeah. right now. So everyone's looking and hopefully we could, you know, lift each other up and maybe yeah. help each other out. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, any, any more discussion on the executive director's report generally or this topic specifically or motion to accept the executive director's report? Uh, I'll move to accept the report. And I'll second it. Chad moves and uh, Carlos seconds to accept yes. the executive director's 
what am I saying? That's the old language. Co-directors report. <laughs> Not myself. Few. Um, all those in favor of accepting aye. the co-directors report. Aye. Okay, for saying aye. aye. And opposed. <clears throat> Good staggered aye there with no opposition. Um, so that passes unanimously. Now we'll move to um, bounce back to uh, treasure um, uh, financials. And I guess CJ and Jin would be up for this. Absolutely. Uh, Jin, which do you think I'll go? Jin and I, by the way, have been in pretty much in lockstep. I've been keeping Mike posted as well. Jin, what do you think? You first, and then I'll get into the high picture. Or do you want me to give us a picture of the overall economic situation and some of the opportunities? You're, you, you're, you call it, and I'll follow. I was going to say, I feel like we may have like done the nitty gritty on the budget reports and whether there was questions and as part of that uh, co-directors report. So it may be more of like the bigger picture. And um, we saved the conversation about the extra windfall amount and the plan. And I think we touched upon the, the skeleton of it, but you may have more details to flesh it out. So I would say it's all you, CJ. Okay, thanks, Jen. Uh, I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, Mike Doyle and I met with uh, Mark Quinn at Edward Jones. Many of you remember Mark Quinn came in and met with the board. Uh, and uh, when I first became your treasurer, and, and then Mike Doyle and I have continued to work together closely because uh, for several reasons. One is that his guidance has been superb and the board's in good financial shape because of his actions. Mike Doyle goes all the way back to the founding of Worka. The institutional knowledge is there. <laughs> Um, and so Mike and I continued to communicate regularly and uh, we met with Mark Quinn to discuss where Mark had left off at the last board meeting, which is there are some different ways to manage the money that may be more advantageous to Orca, particularly in the current interesting economic situation that not just the United States, but the whole world finds itself in. Um, and then we also looked at uh, this windfall that Jen referred to, which is a one time expected to be a one time fairly substantial sum that built up during COVID. Uh, and those reasons have already been discussed. Basically, people were less in the field. And, uh, and then in addition to that, with the four positions, now three, there's some additional funds, but it's, it's not expected to be a recurring thing. So there's a sum of about a um, hundred and what would you say, Jen, about 125, yeah. 130,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the um, we met with so the so two different things. One is uh, Jen had discussed with her co-directors yeah. some of the possible uses of that money, and, and we met. And I thought that everything that they discussed sounded sensible to me. Uh, it's not my decision, but I must say I appreciate the work they're doing. The and that was reflected in, for example, the discussion about Harriet. And on my notes in the chat window for anybody who wants, I think they're right on track. The discussion with Mark Quinn looked at what can we do to reduce the risk and increase our options given the current financial situation? And uh, given the windfall, is there a way to better manage that? The recommendation that came out of that meeting between Mike Doyle, myself, and Mark Quinn is two different things. One is um, based on my discussion with the co-directors, it sounded as if if there was a higher yield way to invest that money that was still highly liquid and would yield, you know, make the, mo the money completely liquid, that was a useful thing to do. And that is in the form of something that Orca has used in the past successfully, and it's called laddered CDs. And a laddered CD, is everybody familiar? If so, I won't go into it. If anybody wants an explanation, I'll do that. No, so you. I'm going to take it from that, that everybody's familiar. Okay, so that's it. Um, there's roughly 100, what would you say, Jen? 125 to 135 Mm -hmm. uh, that could come over and still leave the co-directors with a healthy, you know, somewhere between 10 and 20% overage 
uh, in case something really unexpected happened and they needed the money within 24 hours. The, uh, the expected difference in yield between what the community bank currently offers as an interest rate and the very liquid money market fund uh, is approximately $6,000 a year in an extremely conservative and safe uh, alternative placement of that fund. So that one seems obvious, you know, there's just so little downside that um, the recommendation of your, of myself and Mike Doyle to the board is to definitely shift over uh, somewhere between, you know, 125, 135. And, and that will depend on the answer to a question that Jen and I talked about. And then I shot an email over to Edward Jones today, which is just, uh, Edward Jones has said, this money can be made available in, you know, 24 hours or less. It's very, very liquid. And, uh, and then Jen was like, so how do you get it? And I said, actually, that's a good question. So the recommendation is to just shift over somewhere between 125 and 135 thousand dollars into this combination of CDs and money market accounts. Um, one just note, it's of general interest, is that usually CDs, you know, like a three-month CD is at an interest rate of like 3.5 percent, and a 10-year uh, CD for the same amount would be something like 5.5 percent because you think they, you know, they get to keep your money for longer, so they give you a better interest rate. An unusual thing is happening in the markets right now. The long-term CDs are at the same interest rate within a tiny, tiny percentage as the short-term CDs. Mm -hmm. So that tells you the market is thinking that the Fed is probably not going to continue to, to inch up rates. Um, so, so that's all. So at the moment, um, the there is a new account open nothing happens and until uh all three signatures are in but that new account is to create an option for us and that's my next point of discussion but before i move on to that uh the proposal is to move it from jen is it in a savings or a checking account at community bank right now it's a savings account yeah thanks is to shift that money uh, in large part over leaving a small cushion for operations into Edward Jones and the amount will be closer to 20% if there's a, you know, if there's a significant amount of like lots of signatures and process to get it, it would be closer to 10% if the process is lightweight and very reliable. But the, uh, the recommendation is to shift that money over because the difference in yield is approximately uh, $5,000 per $100,000 additional money that we could use to buy. You know, like when Jen and Zach and Chris were talking and Jen relayed it, she's like, Zach's lighting request is, what was it, around three $4,000? Mm -hmm. yeah. So suddenly Zach's lighting request gets covered by the return by moving this over to something that yields better. Uh, so at this point, uh, Mike Doyle and I, in discussion with Mark Wynn, they're just there's very, very little downside in simply shifting over to something that is as liquid as long as you don't need the whole thing at once. And um, and if we do need the whole thing at once, there's very little penalty for turning something different liquid. Uh, any objections or comments on our recommendation and potentially our action very soon, like tomorrow, to start getting this money working a little bit harder? Yeah, that all that all sounds good. Just for specific sake, I remember you on the phone describing it being 125 in five equal chunks, four of them going to four quarters laddered CDs, right? Quarterly rollover on 25, 25, 25, 25. And then the fifth 25 going to money market. Correct. So there there may be a slight deviation from that because obviously things change uh in the, in the markets, but yes, it wouldn't be very different from that at all. It could end up being uh, 20%, you know, yes, the, the division into five courts is, is the proposal with some going into this money market and the rest going into CDs. The interesting thing is that the money market yield at the moment is pretty much the same as the CD yields. Normally the CDs would be yielding better. So what's the variable there for, um, 
not necessarily nailing down that four and one, 25, five buckets of 25, four going to CD, one to money market. Just if something different, substantially different happens between now and two days from now, which is, you know, the markets can move fast, then uh, we would still be taking that money over and laddering the CDs and putting some in, but we may change the uh, allocation. Any other questions? Sorry about that, everybody. It sounds like what's been what we've discussed before in a, a couple of meetings, the meetings, which makes sense. Yeah. As long as the liquidity is there, um, you know, it sounds good. Yeah. The interesting thing is that Mark Gwynn, in discussing the liquidity, said, actually, your current portfolio is so completely liquid that we would be more likely in, to create a favorable uh, situation to simply liquidate some mutual fund you've already bought and leave the CDs out there. He said both sides are are completely liquid. So there's not a liquidity problem. I, I had not realized that until Mike Doyle and I met with Mark Quinn. Okay. So, so I'm sorry. So it would be three something percent is it's what it would be, roughly. The CDs. Uh the CDs. You're asking what the yield is? Yeah, it would be a short term. It would be the short term CDs. Is that correct? Or yeah, right now Mark Wynn said that the you know normally we'd be looking at some longer term ones to mix in, but he said there's no advantage to it right now. Although I want to talk to him a little bit more about that because the flip side of it, and I may have misunderstood him because he's the financial professional, is. If the market is looking at these going down, we may actually want to keep to lock in. You know, right now the CD rates are just under five percent. Yep, that's not a terrible yield. Um, the rule of sevens is that your money, if you invest, you know, at seven percent, that whatever you invest in will double in seven years. So if you put in ten thousand at seven percent, in seven years you'll have twenty thousand. And I think with five percent interest, our money would actually double in. I think it's ten years. I think it's Something like 5% gets you a doubling in 10 years. So it is dramatically better than what Community Bank is yielding. Jen and I jumped on and we're looking at Community Bank and I'm like, holy cow, that's a bigger spread than I realized. We really need to do this. Mm -hmm. So um, any other, did I answer your question? Yes, you did. I'm just looking into it right now. Yes. Okay, so there is a part two here. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll obviously let you know exactly what happens. And um, I am relying heavily on Mike Doyle and Mark Quinn uh, to, uh, you know, in, in, in this, this decision making process. The second part of it is we looked at, as you know, when Mark Quinn was in last time, he said the way your stuff is structured is not the way that I would do it but there's nothing wrong with what you have, right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. So the meeting was actually to say, Mark, fill us in on what you mean by that. And his recommendation was to, our current, uh, our current money is in some family funds, funds in, a, in a family of funds that existed when Mike Doyle made this decision, you know, over a decade ago. Since then, they have uh, added more things that you can do, like more things you can, you can uh, invest in that are also very conservative, but more diverse. And the uh, Edward Jones company um, research branch sounds like they've paid a lot of attention to some of these newer areas and their recommendations tend to span all of their capabilities. His, recommendation was to consider right now we're in a situation where we buy a fund up front. We pay somewhere between 4% and 2.5% depending on what we buy up front. So 
for example, the uh, the twenty thousand dollars that we invested, the uh, that was just sitting in cash that is now yielding pretty close to four and a half percent. The cost to do that was, he said, about eight hundred dollars. So we thought we invested twenty thousand and twenty thousands yielding. Instead, it's more like nineteen thousand and a little. So that's the upfront cost. However, it's a one-time fee. He said, you have a very limited number of things you can, you have ways that you can put your money to work right now. There's a, an opportunity, and he, he did a lot of research after our meeting and discussion and came back and said, we can give, you know, because you're a not-for-profit, uh, you actually qualify for a lower rate than most of our clients, which is 1.08%. So for the math geeks out there, like me, uh, what you're looking at is an annual fee of 1.08%, which is versus this one-time fee of uh, 4% for most of our stuff and like 2.5% if we do an index fund, which basically just goes up and down with the stock market. The, so, the, um, so you're looking at it. So that's it. You're just, you're spreading out. Are you going to pay for it now? Or are you going to spread out your payments but get many more options on, on what you can do. After discussing it at length, Mike Doyle and I agreed that in our view, moving to a much broader set of things that we can invest the company's, uh, you know, rainy day fund in, so it needs to stay conservative, is, and pay less upfront, is a worthwhile uh, thing to do mainly because at the moment to make a change decision, we're biting the bullet on suddenly paying another 4% every time we make a change, unless it's inside this current limited family of funds. If we shift to this newer model, there is no cost whatsoever to make a change to respond to an unexpected market condition that threatens something that we thought was low risk and now looks less low risk. Um, for example, Boeing would look normally kind of low risk because it's a massive, you know, company, but now Boeing's supply chain got held up in the stock tank. Um, and that was, you know, that was an unexpected but very significant change in the value of a huge, like a, not just a large cap, but a huge cap that's in a lot of uh, our portfolios. So, those are the kinds of unexpected things that can happen to a conservative investment. So the only downside that we saw is that if for any reason, you know, we got into the right thing and we never wanted to move again, then the total cost of ownership would be slightly higher in this new model. The upside is we have uh, it's a very small cost difference, like less than a percent in the worst case analysis. And in the best case analysis, we are much better off and have many more. We have much more flexibility, sorry for the background noise, um, in how we react to the currently really interesting global economy that we find ourselves in. So based on that, Mike Doyle and I both felt very comfortable in recommending that we change to this uh, new model, and the cost to us would end up being 1.08%, but we will have much more flexibility and much more ability to take advantage of Edward Jones' research team in the area of you know conservative management of an asset that whose purpose is to provide Orca with stability over multiple quarters if needed. And that is it. Any questions? So, yeah, I have a question. So the the family, the market we were in before, up until this point, has there been a lot of move? Have we ever wanted to change or move to something else within that? How many changes? We've have done we some changing within that, and okay. uh, so, uh, for example, uh, we were down thirteen thousand. I think I I asked them to uh, fax me. I was like, could you just email me a snapshot? And she's like, I don't know, we'd rather fax it to you. So uh, they were going to try to fax it to me and I didn't see it come in. But the short snapshot is we were down maybe 13,000. Uh, we 
we did some maneuvering within the family of funds is my understanding uh, based on two meetings with Mark Gwynn. And then we, you know, based on that, we were up, uh, I think it was nine, eight to 9,000 since the beginning of the year. So we're currently okay. at 309 versus a little below in, in the 200s uh, in January 1st. So had we been working and this is a, had we, we were working within the new model, we would have done movements much quicker. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? No, we the, the time to do the new investments is the same. The main benefit is that in the new model, we would not be having to calculate, oh my Lord, we're gonna have to pay another 4% upfront to change. Uh, there's no cost to make any changes to adjust to changing market conditions. And we would have more freedom to choose. So yes, we would probably still stay conservative and, you know, this didn't happen. So I, this, but hypothetically we would have been up a little bit more without more risk. Yeah. Thank you. It's been interesting. I'm uh, appreciating the opportunity to to do this job and try to learn <laughs> and do a you know do a reasonable job of of following in Mike Doyle's incredibly you know solid footsteps. And so uh, my intention remains to uh, continue to work closely with Mike with both Mikes. Uh, and so at the moment, what I'm doing is trying to. You know, Mark Gwynn also came in and he's, you know, he's relatively new to the portfolio, a couple of years old. And so my attempt is to, to keep in mind the conservative requirements while uh, understanding what the new options are and to work very closely with Mike Doyle to understand um, what the opportunities are and then to sort of stay inside his approach because I think his approach worked very well for the company. If anybody has any guidance or suggestions, I am all ears. CJ, the, you had a name for this new, it's basically a new way of doing our, our the fees for buying and selling, right? Yes, and I am going to just pop over to my notes and see if I can bring that up. Sure. And I'll just kind of, while you're doing that. So I guess ages ago, we paid one upfront fee to stay within a certain family of portfolios, I guess. Correct. We bought, we essentially, yes. And then and if within we move that around family, within that, we have no fees. That's right. But if we, exactly move, right. if we move out of it, we have a 4% charge. Uh, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. and, and and the proposal is that we would move to a, you're looking up the name of it, a different type of doing the, the fee structure. Correct. In fact, I'm realizing that the best place for me to look the fastest is in my text to you. <laughs> okay. So let me just find that. Um, Cause I think I either texted or emailed you notes from that meeting, but uh, yes. And just to clarify the reason that this, increased options is valuable is fund management is all about the talent and the funds compete with each other for the best talent. And so the fund family that we went into that Mike got us into was really just a brilliant high flying performer. And now there are a lot more middle of the road <laughs> because some of their talent has been poached by other, you know, super high flying funds. And that's the uh, that's part of the ability to respond that we're looking for. And then the other ability to respond that we're looking for is just changing market conditions. Um, for example, the situation in Ukraine created huge changes in any large cap. And we're remember we're we're pretty conservative. So uh, that was related to, for example, you know, producing weaponry or energy.
I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Oh, I'm realizing that I actually texted you my first meeting and not my second meeting. Uh, I'll have to get back to the board just to avoid the time, but it's something like, um, it's got a, the first initial starts with S, but it's essentially a, um, a managed account. And then it's, instead of paying 4% per sale, We've not per sale, but per purchase. per purchase. We've already paid the upfront charge. And this is part of why the money is so liquid and would remain, it would remain just as liquid in the new managed account as in the old situation. Both of them are highly liquid because both of them, and they're aimed, you know, the whole point is this money is not like buy and hold money, even though we've been acting that way because, you know, the, the decrease in, in, Revenue from the cable companies has been slower than anticipated, although it does look like it's you know finally coming up. I'm very encouraged by the van report, um, you know, both by the million dollar fund that's being created and by the proposal uh, to get the money out of pole attachments. I can tell you from the EC Fiber Board that's a big deal, and um, so I think that uh, you know we ended up in much better shape than for much longer than we than we had dared to hope for, but. You know, whether they say past results is no predictor of future performance. So this is an attempt to get us some ability to be flexible and respond. And right now we're a little bit locked into a small, uh, two, two relatively smaller fund families that are viewed as, you know, not bad, but we want to be able to go to the conservative grades um, as, as appropriate. And the big thing is just to remember it's conservative, but to be conservative thing. and in a corner with only a few options is less good than conservative and having lots of options. So in the new one, we will have lots of options. We won't find ourselves, you know, in a few yeah. years in the same situation, mm -hmm. we will continue to have a wider variety of options. That is absolutely correct. The main thing that it does is it removes the hesitation of, oh my Lord, we really need to make a change, but it's going to cost 4% up front. Um, this new structure is it's a lower it's a lower percentage to it's buy nice. but we have to pay it whether we buy or not yeah. annually. correct that's that's, that's the difference there right mm -hmm. so they just take that out edward jones gets that money every january is that kind of it just is on an annual That's basis? That's correct. And yep. then that just that gives correct. us that just gives us the year to do what we will. Exactly right. And no cost is, going like, to anything. What, what is one point eight percent of our whole portfolio? Or sure. So the one point eight percent of our whole portfolio is about three thousand versus uh, if it's four percent, obviously that's more like twelve thousand. But that's, you know, that would be if we shifted the whole portfolio into a different right. place. Right. Um, the other thing is if we shifted, if we felt a need to shift our portfolio twice in a year, now you're talking 24,000 versus if we felt the need to shift it uh, twice in the new model, it would still be 3,000. How many times, like in a typical year, do we shift things? So how, how many times did that expense is an actual like historical reality? I do not know. I honestly do not know. I'm pretty new to the job and I have not reviewed the historical records. And I think I, another question, I mean, I would be, we didn't shift as much as we wanted to because of that reason of the limitations, I think. Carlos is exactly correct. That was the reason for him proposing this. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, want to presume, but that was my strong that's impression. That's what I think too. That's what I think of also. And and as far as what you're presenting right now, this is a decision that needs to be made like like today, tomorrow, and who makes the decision and right, right. and all this, mm -hmm. all that. 
Yeah, yeah, to make the transition requires three signatures. Uh, mine, Mike Doyle's, because he's still on our accounts, and Michael Abadi's. And Mike, is this a voting thing or is this just not? Is this, it's just what they would. Um, I, th I think, info. you know, you, we're all being informed. Okay. Um, and certainly if, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd like it to be something people are comfortable with. Um, but it's kind of the, you know, the treasurer's job to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think Mike Doyle advised CJ to just, you don't want everything to go up for a full board vote. And yeah. You know, you, you do get that. But I mean, if there is some like real question about like, wait a second, if we're paying three grand a year, how does that, or is it four grand a year, three grand a year? No matter uh, what. Yep. About three, three, three grand a year at our current, uh, yeah. portfolio size. I will say one other thing. Um, yeah. We are very close to being where we want to be. And the other, yeah, I don't want to, this is actually a new thing, but we're pretty, we're pretty close to where we want to be. At that point, we actually want the money to go out and get spent on some useful thing that's consistent with Orca's mission. And the only thing that, uh, and so, when Jen, I, I had taken a little bit of a temperature. Uh, the only thing the board had to add is consider uh, also doing something kind of like what you guys have already done where you paid for the entry fees. Consider um, an internship possibly and possibly sponsoring or, or uh, supporting something that really brings community voices out that's, that's actively doing that. My personal favorite would be aging in Vermont just because scammers, health, hospice, you know, those issues are coming up all over the place and we have a pretty significant aging population and it ends up covering diversity issues and LBG uh, and BIPOC and everything else because they all have their own needs. But, you know, that's that was the only thing I think that that came out of a couple of discussions that I, that I added. I really feel like the co-directors are doing a good job in their financial planning and management. And I think felt, Mike Doyle felt the same way. It sounds good you know, the, hearing that you've been very thorough with this and, and brought in the historical perspective from Mike Doyle and everything is, is, uh, is I think, very good. I think I'm putting putting the decision making on solid bound, uh, like footing, you know, so that to hear that he has given a buy in for for moving this over and um Following up on what Carlos said, the, we've you had two points: the shift to the laddered uh, CDs, and then the the um, portfolio change. Do either or both of those need to be voted on, or both are are a, a advising standpoint? Uh, they're both advisory. However, mm -hmm. we are better, uh, you know, considering these things together. So. I'm here to say this is a this is our proposed action. Um, please let us know if there's something we have not considered or thought about that you're considering and thinking about, because your wisdom helps inform our decisions, and we offer this with, with great respect for the fact that the you know the ability of the board to consider and, and respond and think together gives us the guidance that we need. And actually, CJ did um, see if Mark could make it tonight, but um, I don't know. Do you want to see if he can make He's it? He's on the holiday. Next? Yeah, Do you want to see if he can make it idea. to the next board meeting? I think so. I mean, to be able to be educated by a financial professional in today's day and age, I think like it's a great opportunity for all of us. It's like a perk to being a board member. Yeah, and it'd be good to follow up when he presented on sort of cleaning up and greening up our portfolio, yeah. which would require some moving around of things, which would make the, you know, the upfront lesser fee make more sense. Um, it does look like June 27th is our fourth Tuesday in June. Just if you do want to pop him an invitation, that would be our next board meeting. Yep. June 27th, uh, 630, is it? 630 up live with pizza or remote without. I'll shoot um, an email over to uh, to the uh, Edward Jones office right now. 
I appreciate it. Yeah, because that's that's um yeah, really just just getting everyone informed and up to speed, and also questions and concerns. Um, and then I don't know if that does it for financial reports. People have more questions. Is if we don't get a bridge funding, what does it do to anything? Now we're now we're talking about the state ledge, uh, the million. Yeah. I can't understand what's going on with the state or with the government. Yeah, that would, I don't know if that's a gin or a. Can you ask that a million would be divided by twenty five. The bridge funding doesn't go through, even though it's been entered and and discussed. Is that what does that mean to any of us? Um, if it, if, well, I mean, I think there's a strong likelihood that it is going to go through. So, well, no, but if it doesn't go through, I think it's just uh, it's a, an extra kick towards the operational funding uh, that we won't get. I well, mean, it's not uh, essential to any of the stuff we're talking about. I mean, it might be essential, not anything that we're talking about, but it might be, I think that we're in a, as we have just heard from, from CJ and we've heard by looking at, I think we're in a privileged position compared to others. You know, I think that uh, that money might be something that other AMOs are more likely relying on, especially the smaller folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to know whether we as board members should be on the legislature or on the committee or on the governors, you know, to make sure that, that goes through. Well, so I think that there's often opportunities to publicly testify, and that's when um, our our lobbyist uh, action circles that we're working with mm -hmm. makes those opportunities available okay. and, and encourages board of directors members throughout the state to join. I think that that's when your voice is most you know necessary, and especially if this uh, community now you know to the community media public benefit fund, that would be there would be a hearing for that. And that would that would be the next thing. But I don't think there's any more hearings as far as the budget and the bridge funding. That was okay. already taken place. Thank you. Great. Um more on financials or move to accept the uh treasurer's report and financials. I moved I moved I do a motion to move this. I, I think I'm I hear this. Carlos so moving. Is there a second? Or more discussion? I put you all to sleep. <laughs> I'll second it. Chad seconds. Chad seconds to accept no, the you did it. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, it's a lot to take in. Um, yeah. All those in favor of accepting the financials and treasurer's report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And that brings us to a strategic planning update is what I see on my agenda. And I just left that on there just yeah. because, you know, I think there was talk about like firming up the date and then this other conversation, I think when there was a, a little bit of urgency in getting new board members on to be part of that planning process, just so that the voices that are being, I guess, heard in the strategic planning process, we we looked at the makeup of the board right now, and we're like, okay, so if we're looking to try to diversify our board, does it make sense to just do the planning process with just the board here, or is it, you know, would it be better or a more productive planning process to have more voices? And that's what those new three members might be. And so we do want to move forward with the planning. And I think that that's, you know, the next month of doing that retreat. But then I would say, I, I would also put out there, like, if we're doing the retreat with just the group here, Fine. if there's decisions, especially if we're looking to the forward like the next few years not having as many voices as we have and I just you know the makeup here is I've, I'm concerned there's one female board member and it's all just and so I'm like you know that's where I think why we're like trying to get as many new board members in 
for, for this process so that when we start to make these bigger plans and whether, you know, mm -hmm. I think that kind of puts in where that urgency of trying to like get that recruitment process going. But at the same time, we don't want to hold up the strategic planning process. So I don't know what the answer is. I thought it might be something to be worth talking about of, you know, is there a benefit to just getting it up, doing the planning without the new board members or if we're trying to, um, if it does mean to delay it or do we maybe, is there like with that recruitment process, is there a way to maybe, I don't know, it makes sense that they should be here for a board meeting. So I don't know if there's some way to like do some like mini board meeting or like have like a little group that might, like not quite like an interview process, but so that's the only bit that I wanted to, it's unfortunate that we lost those voices, but at the same time, um, I was, I think that's why we stopped, we postponed the process because we did like at that point have that same makeup we had, I think CJ wasn't available and um, Rachel wasn't. So then it was like back to just a very, mm -hmm. um, So my question would be, if we postpone it, um, can we do it within the next couple of weeks, like a, like a week from now, for example? The, in terms of, yeah, the the the, the planning, in, in terms of uh, Nathan Sutter and canceling him out, moving and shifting forward. I feel like he would be, I think he's aware of like, we lost board members yeah. and that's what was going on. So yeah. I think if we needed to reschedule with okay. him, he would be available and, um, and okay with doing that. I think, I know that there it's, it's a bummer to have it like string out for so long, but yeah. I do worry that if we started this planning process and we didn't have like three members or, you know, two, like however many new members that yeah. it wouldn't maybe. So, so what we're saying is that we want our members to be diverse in some form of capacity, right? That is what we're looking for. I think that's a huge priority. It, and that's I agree. What, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... That said, then would it be wise to just decide today, right now, to just postpone it so that way we're not rushing, rushing yeah. to get those people? I think that we're on that. I, yeah, I think we wanted to give you all the the door to walk through and say that, you know, although we're punting it down, that, that might be even soon, even even May 23rd is rather soon, yeah. Okay. I think I th I was thinking like in terms of okay expediting a board member to get them on board for a strategic planning, but that's a big ask to ask a brand new board member to just come on in and tackle strategic planning with us. Um, right. So that w when yeah. we were talking earlier, I was a little like, yeah, that could work, but it, it is asking a lot of someone to hit the ground running. Like, um. I agree. Yeah. So I see where this conversation is going, and I'll just nudge it, nudge it even further in that direction. Okay. Uh, getting uh, getting getting our board a, a little more configured prior to uh, our strategic planning is is sounding is that consensus like? Yeah, okay. okay. I'm happy to reach out to Nathan. And, yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. let him know that this situation. Yeah. yeah. And then we could expect one, two, maybe three um, potential board members visiting us on the 27th. Right, and then do we want to, do we have a goal of like, we just, you know, if we have two folks kind of in the in the uh, the group that we can schedule the retreat or, you know, we want to have three or, you know, because if, yeah, I mean, ideally, I think we would have yeah three by June. Yeah. I, I have to say, I mean, Regardless of that, yeah. which I I agree with y'all, like we should, I think we should postpone it and search for those, get those diverse members. I agree with that. But I have to say that I'm out, you know, after, you know, I'm going to be out in June right, right. and then I'm going to be out in July and I'm going to be back in September would be the next closest date for me. Right, right. So, okay. Exactly. I'm not, yeah. And I say, yeah, I think that we but, have a busy summer too. With, but that's yeah. that's fine. I mean, I, if we need, and I agree, I think we should get board members that are committed and diverse and and then have that, you know, and then afterwards have their retreat at some point. Yeah, we've yeah. done a lot this year and it's, it's okay to, you know, 
slow down and, and work things at a pace that's that's uh, sensible and thoughtful. Yeah, and maybe I'll just like reiterate that kind of uh, North Star, if you will, that's like ringing in my ears from uh, Amy Cunningham over at the uh, Vermont Arts Council when, you know, we applied for that big grant and, you know, kind of went through all this, kind of wrote about things that we want to do, wrote about think the work that we do to serve under-resourced, underrepresented communities. And she was like, well, you know, does your board reflect that you know so it's like that's a huge thing you know it's like it's one thing you know does your staff reflect that does your board reflect that that it's yeah you might serve that community or those communities but it, it, it's helpful to also bring those folks in and you know and yeah and show that yeah they're at, anyway yeah yeah no that makes sense <laughs> so we're working on it yeah So, um, so I'm I'm hearing we'll hold off on that May 23rd. That's a reschedule. Yeah. Oh no, that's from the question mark. Goes question mark. Oh, yeah. It goes back to the question mark. Um, <laughs> or a dot dot dot. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. yeah. I think we should just yeah. do that then. That's okay. May um, more in strategic oh. planning or um that's I think the big thing. Yeah. Roll right into old business. Um, and does that bring up your procedural question, Carlos? Well, you know, uh, kind of a little bit. I think, you know, yes, it's old business and new business. I think uh, one thing that we have addressed in the past is, is how we're going to go about doing that. And, and I feel like there was some new business or old business that we talked about that it's up in the air. Like, for example, I'm trying to find that right now. Um, or was it? Um... So I think his, sometimes what we've done in the past or could do in the past is grab the new business that was listed in the minutes and shift them into old business. So yeah. what was new business last meeting with that? Like if there are yeah. things that are ongoing. So yeah. I think Dave, you mentioned in the minutes, um, it says that you suggested we invite Katie yes. out to join up with Correct. one of the board meetings. Correct. So that would become an old business. So maybe what... I can do in terms of pulling the agenda together is anything that seems like it's an ongoing thing for the new biz from the new business in the minutes from the previous. I'll stick in the old business and say, you know, this is correct. Inviting Trady, Katie Trouts to attend the meeting to talk about Montpelier Live and yes. whether that's been done in potential partnership. And I think the old business would have been the discussion of the board makeup. So correct. that's kind of we kind of hit it with the strategic planning, but that may be, would that help with the procedural? That, 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 absolutely, that will help. And I think keeping that list there, that way, if it starts growing, then, then what are we doing, right? Because I think, you know, in terms of, they suggested that we invite Katie Trouts, have we been, did we try to do this? Is this somewhere, um, is, is it on a to-do list? You know, is it happening or not, right? Because we, I am not sure if this, or who's gonna be in charge of that, right? All, all those things to, to determine, right? All those things. Sure. I think, but yes, moving that to keeping that in, moving it to the old business and keep keep that list there. It's it's a, it's a good way to do this, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless, yeah, you know, it doesn't just get lost. Yeah, get lost for, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I know. Rob, Rob tried to like a rolling to do list, and that can be that can be tricky. Um, it is. I don't know if it's a perennial, but it is definitely it's tricky to keep an eye on. Oh yeah, that thing and that thing and that thing. Um, right. But actually codifying it in the agenda, Jim, that that would make it hard to ignore, huh? Yes. Correct. I love that. All right. Um, other other on old or into since new? that's old business, I actually uh, now that I'm re reminded that we discussed that before, I actually did talk with Katie uh, oh. last oh, week, great. and so she is there interested. In, there's some. I, I encourage her to reach out to you guys about they. There's a proposal of of doing something for businesses in downtown, and I'm not sure if it's something I told her. I wasn't sure if it fell under our mission with Orca, but um, for that and in regard to it, before we started the meeting proper, I told you that they want to start a um, projector committee um, that uh, figures out how and 
for what to use the Montpelier community projector on public art and uh, uh, other sorts of projects around town. And um, I told her I didn't know very much about the technical side of the projector, but that there are probably people here who um, could. And if it's a community project, it's probably more along the lines of, of the ORCA purview things. Um, so just that's an update to the old yeah. business. Um, right. That right there is some Montpelier live things and, and just local mm -hmm. town things to uh, that's awesome. <laughs> try and interface with. Yeah. And yeah. I'd like I definitely suggested to her to get someone from here to get onto the board. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. And I'll add different. that I also asked her if she had any interest in serving on the board too. No, you yeah, did. I haven't heard back yet. So I was like, you or anyone you know. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you for the update. Yeah, that's great. So we could yeah, probably hear hear more from her. Mm -hmm. Um moral business or into new. Is your, I always bring up the the thing that seems to me that's important for us, but is in some ways breaking news all the time. So right now, breaking news is that they've just had the guy for the uh, colleges, the state college quit right. and walk yeah. away from his work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so now there's this whole thing that's hanging about who's gonna come back in. They also took, after he left, his job, which was to make $5 million on, on his job, that went out the door with him. So therefore, now they're gonna put books back in the library, you know, and all the things that he was gonna to do to save money are gonna go be re restored. That was breaking news today. In other words, people want books. They don't want it all digitalized and the books somewhere else. I only bring it up because I think that it's a breaking news issue that we as an organization may need to be a discussing forum for. The same other part of it is, should anybody teach kids that there was slavery, you know, and who it was that built the White House, and what color they were, and all the things that aren't being allowed to be taught because of parents not wanting their kids to hear the real story of the history of this country. That's a huge breaking curricular issue that's going on now in the letters to the editor and around town we don't have any particular place where that topic is either raised, discussed, or action on that front. So that's what I that's why I bring it up always at the end, because it's not anything we can say, oh yeah, what a great idea that is. But I, I do think that we need to find out whether it's because of people that we get to come in that, that help inform us or give us a for them a forum to do the kind of organizing of businesses that Katie Trouts may want to do. So I'll quiet down. And Dave, do remember that board members can have their own show if you want to. That's what I was going to say. Want to right build now. it? They will you come, right? Mind. You read my mind, Dave. That's your hey, show. Dave. Man. Come on, Dave. I've, I've been wanting to do a show. The first few episodes here. Right, Dave, well. I've been wanting to do a show, and um, if you want a tag team so that we're not having to do all the content all the time. Yeah, you could do every other. Okay, week well, we should talk. Month. Let, okay. Let's talk after the meeting. See you got it. Okay. I'll stick my uh just in case you need it, I'm sticking my cell phone number into the uh yeah, the chat sounds window. Great to me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll and warn you, I've got a couple of weeks of flat it out, and then uh in May I'm way more way more available. CJ well, on new business you wanted to go. Oh, sorry. If I can talk with CJ, then I know that my little so super lame plan will now be able to take flight. And she'll be oh, <laughs> Yeah. I think it'll be good. Show. We are past eight. And I just want to, CJ, yeah. I know you had something for new business in terms yeah, of bylaws. Uh, you want to just kind of rough outline it? My rough outline is um, a standby. What I'm going to do is because I emailed these, is I'm going to grab them. Actually, Jen. Are you able to grab that the text of that email that I thought I had sent Mike Abadi, but I sent it to the wrong address and throw it into the chat window? I will. I'm looking for awesome. it now. Thank you so much. 
my main interest is this. I'm on several boards and I'm learning a lot of lessons. One of the lessons is we now have enough money that right now we have high trust and lots of really phenomenal people, but we are not always going to be here. That's part of the good news, right? Because we'll change and new perspectives and expertise will come in. The bad news is uh, they're not always people of high moral integrity, I'm afraid. And so at the moment, uh, we have no minimum quorum. If Mike started calling weekly meetings, which he could do, uh, we would pretty soon get sick of turning up and soon there would be three people. And then the two people who agree with each other could pass anything they want. And that would be legal and it would be done. So uh, I wanted to draw our attention to a really, really obvious classic takeover strategy of a not-for-profit, which is call a bunch of meetings, people get sick of showing up. Once you've got people tired, and this is done in the legislature every day, the people who manage to stay until 1130 at night end up writing the law. Everybody else gets to talk and feel like they got their perspective in, but the people who actually stayed until 1130 at night, they write the law. That's where the horse trading is done. So... Uh, and there's in the chat window now is what I propose. So what I did was just look at our bylaws. Thank you for including those in the board packet and say, hmm, we have a couple of places where we can build uh, some protection for the company. Hmm. And Jen, thanks so much for, for the quick work in doing that. No so we're talking about amending the bylaws, is this correct? To better protect and serve Orca Media. I think there's a number of things, it looks like she's studying it not here, but yeah, yeah. there's a number of things that might be worth considering okay. not or I don't know, like that we all can read. I don't think that we can all necessarily yeah, read that right now. But I don't yeah. think I have the capacity right now to yeah, read Yeah, I was going to say, this might be something. Yeah, and I, I actually so. need, I think we need to get back to the original bylaws because I don't think we can call a meeting with three. So um, maybe we can call for bylaws. Yeah, there is no, I mean, we did look at, there's no minimum in there. It's right, not, so. yeah. That's a minimum it's number not, of board members, but a quorum is always a majority. Correct. That's the danger. At the moment, uh, there's there's no minimum quorum. So whether you have minimum. nine board members, if only three turn up, two can vote anything they want. I I don't think we can meet with 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 less than a majority. We've canceled meetings due to lack of a quorum. It does define it. And I actually think, our, doesn't our bylaws say we meet um, every other month? You know, we've canceled so I don't think I could do this long minute, war didn't... of like just calling a meeting every other day and having two people show up and decide to move all the budget into my back Mike, pocket. I agree. Um, I think do we that. have to get, I think we have to start with the bylaws as they are written. That's right. I, I read the bylaws as they're I don't think it interacts written. with what's there accurately. Some of okay. it's great, and I can't tease it out right now, but yeah, but this isn't with... to say right. This is not to say vote on this tonight. Oh, and bylaws. If you things. look at our bylaws, to make a change to the bylaws takes like six months. It's three votes. Right, right. Over the course of a meeting Correct. every other month, it's it's half a year. To just make a little clean little fix, it took yep. half a year, but we saw it through. Right. But and I think Mike, I, I might have start with our original bylaws as they stand. I I easily may have missed something. I did a quick review looking for some particular techniques that I know have just been used in two boards that I'm on successfully to control and waste. And they're both companies with media connotations to control and waste the cash assets of the company. One of them is now is a non-Vermont company and it's down its assets are now down by two thirds and its membership is down by two thirds as well. Those are unrelated. The other one, uh, you know, I'll just say that uh, there are significant issues. So I would, I would think these proposals would be housed in the policy circle and then, and, and that would get brought to the board 
and then it is it's like it's, it's a three vote but, but we we have you know existing bylaws for working with bylaws changes um but there are things it there are me maybe things you know that are just common practice that i considered like yeah they're probably in the bylaws like i thought we had a minimum of seven but it's not on the bylaws so a good Correct. vetting of what we have there um and then compare it out with some of these proposals seems yeah. like the next step sure if if you yeah. want uh the, I think the it's point a, one I think it's, point one I think was just to point out that without a minimum yeah. quorum we're at risk you wouldn't do that mike and that's why i said this is not for who we are now it's for who we could become uh, yeah. so point one was just to point out that this is a potential avenue that's being used commonly Point two uh, was just that an audit, a regular audit is a good idea. And I didn't see something that required a regular audit. Uh, the board has already voted some funding for an audit. And when we do that, I think we should explore uh, whether there's you know, some intermediate thing that's really cost effective. Somebody else who's got a lot of governance experience today, knowing I was going into this meeting, suggested that we also consider the board asking to take a subset of people to just do a review of the books every year. You know, that's not, I, mean, I could be on it, but it would be me and other people so that there's that extra oversight. Three was, um, uh, you know, we've already discussed three earlier in the meeting, but it's just the idea that we're in a state that is, reliably voting democratic but the area that we represent is um, is very very mixed and too in, in some areas quite conservative and that to just continue to actively outreach and remind them that it doesn't mean they don't get a voice because right now one of the issues is that the very conservative side is being propagandized to feel that it has no voice in a liberal area and so we can say, no, we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your voice. It's just a thought that in the current political climate, one of the things we can do to help our communities is just to keep reaching out saying, we want all, we want all voices. I posted in the text earlier that I thought Micah Body had done a great job of expressing. Yeah, and there's no way to, to say put that. something like that in bylaws. Bylaws are like about the structure of the organization. I, I agree. That one said, can our purpose include a statement? It wasn't a bylaws of proposal. Uh, for the would be a bylaws proposal, I noted that the board appoints itself and replaces itself. And it just was something to think about. Could, the, could we provide a, a means for the community to object to a board member? At the moment, the community has no choice whatsoever. If we all decide we wanna put somebody on and the community is like, hell no, um, there's no option, there's no recourse. Uh, point five is just, we should have an annual conflict of interest disclosure if we don't already. And then my last point was just, uh, you know, that as a matter of policy, and then the rest of it's self-explanatory. And Jen and I had a continuing conversation. Uh, my goal is not to be draconian, it's to provide the fantastic group of directors the opportunity to go out and do their jobs and shine. Um, and just to say, you know, but, but not to you know, bless uh, but not also not as a board to be responsible and say, hey, we're doing our job for oversight. We're putting in processes to let the the officers, you know, uh, the the uh, sorry, the operating directors do their jobs without interference. And then just some some other suggestions for oversight. I sent a I shot a quick suggestion over to Jen earlier to share and think about with absolutely no pride of authorship. I've never gotten one right yet, but it was just some thinking about how to do that in a financially responsible way. Thanks for letting me talk. Sure, I could, I don't know, probably, Jen, you have the email of this? Yes. Could you just bounce it to the whole board? Cause sure. you know, we'll lose it in the text chat. And then but thanks. I do agree, Mike. I think I do agree. We sh this should be moved over to the to the smaller committee, and then that committee right. could tackle this. You know, could go deep into this, right? Have the questions answered, and the whole thing come up with kind of the cliff notes for all of us, and then we could we could if we decide to move on with that, then that would be whatever next steps are. Yeah, and if 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 we are going to change the bylaws, we need you know specific language, like a conflict uh, of interest policy makes a lot of sense, but. 
you know, the verbiage has to be there. So if someone's got to do that heavy lifting, um, and I'm sure there's templates out there, but, um, yes, this is good. It's good, good to get the ball rolling on this because, it, uh, bylaws changes take time. And it also prompts me to just get reacquainted with our bylaws as they presently stand. Um, mm -hmm. you know, is a quorum defined? I, I've just, you know, assumed Robert's rules would, we, we, we couldn't make this, we couldn't, we couldn't meet without, without a majority. Um, and thank you for doing uh, the heavy lifting tonight. We got five out of six, which is, you know, that's, we're a small board right now. So that's, thanks for everyone's level of participation. Um, other new business or, uh, I, the clock just turned to 820. Could accept the motion to adjourn. Oh. Go oh, ahead, I was going to say just about, I didn't know if we need to formalize, Chad has stepped up to being the secretary, so I didn't know if we needed to have that in, and whether, if there was anything around the fact that Rachel had to step down and we got a replacement secretary, and if there was anything around that. And I think Chad expressed today he was subbing. He's subbing, okay. <laughs> yeah, right? Is that, is that interim? Yeah, he's subbing, he's subbing. Okay. <laughs> All right, interim by acclamation. <laughs> Everyone's grateful, Chad. Thank you. Yeah, we are good. so much. <laughs> and then the last, I think we talked about the board candidates, and I think, you know, definitely send on your people. The annual meeting date, I think, as part of the bylaws, one of the things that they talked about was the annual meeting happens in May, and whether that do we want to continue on with the annual date in May and is that what we're kind of planning for or if it needs to be shifted is that that would be something that the board would need to decide so it was kind of just yeah that's that's important um so we had a you know COVID shifted us into the fall mm -hmm. we had the world shut down and we finally did a, a you know hoping the world would open back up and we did a um it was basically Rob did a slideshow as our annual meeting, I believe in the September of 2020. Um, and then we've just kind of kept the fall thing, but it is a little awkward because we're reviewing, you know, the year prior, which is, it was nine months ago at that point. Um, or we like the new rhythm of September. Um, but we have, we have shifted and actually the last the last annual meeting was quite a to do with um the the John Block um mm -hmm. uh memorial and the the crowd that came out for it was you know quite great um i don't know if staff would feel press i mean I, we wouldn't have to remain at that scale that was really um yeah, you kind of set a new bar there um mm -hmm. But we could certainly have, you know, a, a late May um, kind of scale back to our old style annual meeting and just get back on our pre-COVID rhythm. Is this the year to do that? Uh, that's my rough outline of, of the issues there. Can I make a, one thought? Uh, you know how the state house has that one day where all the local businesses come in and showcase their products? And everybody goes to the state house and tries cheese and looks at, you know, so-and-so's consulting or whatever. Well, we could take that one better and we could, you know, could we do our thing, but also say, Hey, you're invited to come in and showcase and this will be live cast. That feels kind of like, like a small business a talent show. Officer meeting. Yeah. I, I mean, that, I think that's a good idea, but I, it feels like a little bit, different as far as inviting businesses in and, and doing things like that feels different than our annual meeting or, or, or an open house showcase our work right and and it actually leads me to wonder like just how is staff capacity if we were going to say hey yeah let's 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 get ourselves back on the main rhythm um are, are people feeling like with the ledge wrapping up and this and that or you could really use yeah, the breathing I mean, on the back I, end of summer i think i, I, I think, think i would actually defer to just staff capacity on this one we're definitely at capacity so i think that adding planning event planning 
um, of any kind for the next month might be a little bit challenging at this point. But we could we could definitely organize something small. Yeah, and and I think We're prioritizing the orders. annual meeting. Yeah. So. Oh, this is the timing for. Are you talking about? Are we talking about planning for the the annual meeting in the fall? This last annual meeting, I think, was my first one. So yeah. I'm sort of. Uh, I don't know how they used to be. <laughs> it used to be much smaller. I think his yeah. last, the one in the fall, was like also an open house. Yeah. So it was. I think we were trying to show off the new space. Um, generally, we don't get nearly that kind of traffic in our annual meeting. If we could try to keep going with that. The only thing I would add to the me the annual meeting date is our tax return gets our due date for the tax return is May 18th, and that's usually some of the numbers that get pulled in, and then we do our annual or Rule 8 numbers, and that's also so it's like if he gives us the tax returns and he's planning on having it done on the 18th, it's if we're looking at like aiming for like the 23rd or it's not a lot of time to get the numbers and sure. do our, our annual report and get that all pulled together by that time. So it is, I mean, it is a little bit tight in terms of like just getting the reports and having something to present for the annual, annual meeting um, in terms of just that piece. And I think if we're, you know, if we're, it seems like if we want to continue on that trend of getting as many people and whether it's not necessarily an open house, but I think trying to get that many people in it was a little bit maybe more advertising and reaching out and talking to the, our groups that we interact with and being like, hey, come to our meeting. I think we did a little bit more of that because we're like, it's our open house, come see our space. Right. So if we did defer it to a, maybe not May, but maybe not as far as fall, I think that was a little bit like, it was hard to talk about the previous year when this that year was almost over also. So mm -hmm. I think maybe not as far as fall, but if maybe May feels a little bit tight to try to get things pulled together and get all the annual report stuff done and then um, have it at the end. So that's- yeah, it, it, It'd be nice to introduce new board members too if we're gonna have an annual meeting. Um, traditionally, the annual meeting has also functioned as an open house, but I just think you guys really fleshed it out um, like it never been before last fall. So when did they, uh, when, so when was, it was in May before, is that right? The, before yeah, the, I think maybe the, the timing that Jin's talking about with the kind of the numbers being, I didn't realize the numbers would be that fresh, um, May 18th and then roll it into, yeah, it was usually like the, you know, the Thursday before Labor Day or something. Um, mm. but it sounds like it sounds like we ought to maybe not wait until September. Although so fall meeting is good, but I, maybe we could we could definitively say let's pick the day for the annual meeting next board meeting. How's okay. that? So That's I fine. think as long as it's in the notes that it's okay that it's not in May because I think the bylaws was like you know unless it's in May unless the board has agreed yeah. to defer it. <laughs> Let's let's commit to um, getting it back in the spring for 2024 and say COVID is truly over. We're still in our COVID hangover here. And so if you want to do anything about diversity, the 19th of June is Juneteenth, a Monday, which is okay. uh, being celebrated more and more than it ever was in the last five years. It has been. When I worked so at Berkeley so Unified School District, you got May 19th off as a day off because it was Malcolm X's birthday. So, Well, it's also Juneteenth mm -hmm. and two days from the summer equinox. Anyway, I was just saying that would be not the fall. School would still be barely in, sir, in happening. The graduations. Right. Yeah, yeah, graduations. Yeah. yeah. But there might be some parents here that like to support Orca. Yeah. The board with being here for their graduation. Anyway, just a potential date. I'm trying to think day of the week. Historically, it's been a Thursday. Does that sound ring true to people? No.
I think deciding that next meeting was is a good next idea. meeting. <laughs> okay. Decide next. Thanks meeting. for getting that on our radar. Yeah. And that's that's noted in the minutes. We're uh, we're yeah. still in our COVID rhythm for scheduling the annual meeting, and uh, we'll not we'll not hit that May the May thing. Thanks for getting okay. that in, Jim. That was all right. Yeah. How are we doing, folks? At eight twenty nine. I'm asleep already, but all right. Maybe. Was that a motion to adjourn, Carlos? That was. I think so. I tried to do that poetically. He yes. got woke for two seconds. Yeah. All righty. Um, does anyone want to formally second that? We got I a lot will. done. There you go. I feel like we are pretty darn efficient too. Did I hear that second? Yeah, I did. I all second. right. All those in favor of adjourning at eight thirty p.m. on the nose, indicate by saying aye. Hi. All right, and opposed. Great. Good doing business with you folks. Yeah. Thanks for the turnout. And uh we'll be seeing you soon enough. Take care now. <laughs>